So hello and welcome to Dommy Tries This. I hope you brought your cup up. Today's coffee cup is my Atlanta coffee cup brought out in honor of Dragon Con, which will be in Atlanta from the 29th to the 2nd. I hope that some of you will be there. If you are, I also hope that we will be able to meet at some point. It's very busy over there. Very, very busy. But the coffee mug, I believe my husband got me this when he went out to uh, California and he picked this up on his way back and it shows the skyline of Atlanta all the way around. And I really, really do like this coffee mug. It's a good coffee mug. It's the perfect size for today. And today's tea is the Stash Salted Caramel. I didn't mix it with anything this time. You guys know I'm always mixing it with the chocolates and stuff like that. Not today. It's going to be completely by itself. It just started steeping, so even though I double bagged it, it will probably not be strong enough yet. But we'll go ahead and give it a sip and then we'll get started. Yeah, I'm mostly getting sugar. Although the caramel is starting to show up. Um, I think I might have put in a, just a little too much sugar in there, actually. Anyway, so today I am actually going to be doing a video that has been requested, and I'm going to show you all how I style my curly hair. So my hair is washed. It's underneath a buff right now. I use buffs to, I used to use buffs to plop, but I don't plop anymore. Plopping is when you get your hair up and you let it uh, sit for about 20 minutes or so, sometimes longer, and uh, it's supposed to help your curl. I have found that plopping does not help my curl. It actually flattens it out some, uh, even if I've curled it, with uh, finger curled it, and uh, so I stopped plopping. But today I had to put it in this to try to keep some of the moisture in for what we're doing. And so this buff, you will find a link on how to get a set of these down below. I also use these to sleep in on some nights when I don't, um, when it's not too hot and I don't want to uh, disturb my curl too much. If I'm not planning to do my hair the next day, then I put it up in the buff. The buff is, these buffs are really, really cool. But I did wash my hair and um, I did put in my leave-ins and all that stuff. I just haven't put in the styling products yet. So hopefully we won't be too wigged out at the end. It's probably gonna be a little different than usual because it has been up in the buff. It's been wrapped up, but you know, um, we will get it wet and hopefully that'll help release any hole that has somehow managed to, um, form in my hair. So I've got my bucket here with my tools and things that I will share with you. Oh, big bucket. So obviously one of the things I need is my blow dryer, uh, my diffuser. So these are two pieces. I will have them linked down below. I got them on Amazon. This is a Conair. They're both from Conair. And this particular blow dryer has a cool warm and hot setting. I like that because I like to actually not use too much heat in my hair. I will sometimes go to warm and use the cool shot button, but I actually prefer to do my hair completely on cool if I have enough time. And then of course we have the off, low, and high. Um, the way I diffuse my hair, which you will see, is called pixie diffusing, and I do use the high. I used to stay on the low, but I do use the high on this. But if you want something that has nothing but, that has cooler air, so that you can avoid using heat or not have to press on the uh, cool shot button all the time, I will have a link to this particular blow dryer down below. And this is also a standard Conair uh, diffuser. It fits on here. You need to make sure to push it all the way in until it clicks. And that goes on there. I would like to get one of those uh, soft collapsible cup kinds when you put it up against your head. The cup kind of collapses a little bit. I would like to get one of those in the future at some point. But at this point, this is working just fine for me. Second, I have two clips. Now, I only use two clips because only... Unlike a lot of people, I do not section my hair. There's only one point where I section my hair and I split it in half. Um, when I put in my product, however, I don't need to section my hair. Uh, I'm not, it, I think a lot of it has to do with um, the way my hair just is. It's a 2B to 3B uh, curl pattern. It's not that thick anymore. 
it was thick before menopause and I think I lost a good one third of it during menopause um, but it's not that thick it's um, or I should say not that dense there's not a lot of it in, in all over the place um, the hair itself is it's not really thin it's not really coarse or anything of that nature but it uh, does there's coarse and thick enough that it still can take four and a half hours or so to dry if I air dry it I do air dry it upon occasion but because of the way my hair is that, that there's not really that much of it in a sense and it's uh, not really uh, kinky or anything of that nature I actually don't really need to um, section my hair to add my product but I do section my hair for one part that we'll be showing you and that's comb curling it's very similar to Denman brush curling or finger curling but we will show you that later but I do need these for that so we have those third on my tools list is this shower brush you can get these at Walmart at Target at I've got I think I found mine at either Kroger, I might have found it at Walmart, but I've seen them at Kroger, I've seen them at several stores. They're not that expensive, they've got wide tooth, uh, the wide teeth. I do not like using brushes in my hair, I actually do have a Denman brush, but I only use it to get my hair, help get my hair wet if I'm going to precondition before I shampoo. Um, and I only do preconditioning before I shampoo if I have to shampoo more than once in a week. Uh, so, but otherwise I will use this comb for comb curling or my fingers. I just find that that makes it less likely that I'm yanking hair out, less likely that I'm going to break it and cause a problem with the length. So you need a comb like this. If you prefer, you can use a Denman brush, but I will be showing you how I comb curl obviously with this one. And last in the actual tools, I guess, my water probably isn't a tool, but it has the actual tools, is just a regular t-shirt. Uh, we're going to be using this a little bit later, but yes, a regular t-shirt. I do not use uh, cotton towels, the cotton nubby cotton towels on my hair. I either put them up in, um, in the buff or I use a microfiber towel on my hair, uh, and I don't scrub dry. I just uh, actually wrap it and just let it soak up. So always trying to be careful about breakage and uh, things of that nature. So that's one of the reasons why I just use the microfiber and uh, don't really scrub my hair or my scalp really all that much. When I wash my hair now, I use my fingers, my fingernails, and I will scrub the scalp with the soap and then I will squish the soap in. But um, other than that, I really don't rub too much on my head. I also have a, uh, so this is an eight to 10 ounce, I believe, uh, water bottle. I have put warm water in it. It's cooled off a bit by now, but I've put warm water in it. And then I add about a teaspoon a little less, half a teaspoon of a really hydrating mask in here, and I shake that up. A lot of times the chunks will still of the mask will be in here, so I'm always shaking it up uh, before I use it. But eventually those chunks dissolve away and they become part of the water. I use this both for getting my hair wet when I need to, when I'm styling it, and also for when I am refreshing my curls later in the week. For my actual styling products, I have this Eden Body Works um, Almond Marshmallow Hydration Serum. This will be the first thing I apply because it has glycerin as like uh, the second or third uh, item in it, which in the summer is a problem. In the winter, it's not. But in the summer, it's a problem for my hair because the glycerin makes me frizzier. So what I do is in the summer particularly I make sure that this is sandwiched between two products that do not have glycerin in them at least two products that don't have glycerin in them and most of my um, most of my hair care products in the summer now do not have glycerin or are very low glycerin meaning it is the seventh or lower ingredient uh, so I use the um, curls blueberry and coconut um, leave-in milk that has no glycerin in it. This will go on next and then I will add this 
Eden Body Works Coconut Shea Natural Styling Elixir, which will go on after that. This helps with frizz, and it's really a good way to balance off what's going on with the um, Almond Marshmallow Serum. This adds a juiciness to my curls that I absolutely really love, and that's one of the reasons why I've continued to use it. It is a holy grail product. This one gives me less frizz. It gives me more, mo more moisture. It uh, says it's an elixir. It's like a serum for your hair, just like this is like a hydration serum for your hair. Uh, I find the two work really well together. Uh, for my styling products, I will be using the Talia Wajid Green Apple and Aloe curl definer and the Talia and Waji green apple and aloe hold me down gelé. Now the thing that I you have to keep in mind if you're going to use these two obviously you can use any products you want or that works for your hair um, but the thing to keep in mind if you use it, these two is that they suck up moisture. So we're going to be talking about uh, in just a minute about how to keep your hair keeping your hair wet enough for your products to go in and it's particularly important with thick uh, creams like these that will suck up that moisture and make it a little harder to keep that moisture in your hair. After my hair dries I usually have a slight cast. I don't go heavy with any of my products. My hair is uh, heaviness would take the curl out of my hair is what I've noticed so uh, I don't go heavy with even with the gel it's supposed to help hold in the curl. So, but I still end up with a bit of a cast from my gel. So I use the Reshma hair serum, henna infused hair serum to help break the cast and break up my curls a little bit with my fingers. It also helps a bit with frizz that I have noticed in the past. So I can use this easily after diffusing and after letting my hair finish dry. And um, this will also, it softens up the cast, like I said, without adding a whole lot of frizz. So that's why I use this particular oil. And then at the end of my styling, for the end of my styling, I use the Aussie Headstrong Volume Spray Gel. I use this in place of hairspray uh, because hairspray dries my hair out. So this doesn't, but it does provide me a little bit of hold. It allows me to crunch in any spots where I may have lost some curl. It allows me to crunch those curls back in. So those are the products I'm using and my tools. We're gonna to start off with obviously removing the buff. It's been up in this buff for a little while. I did put it up in this buff um, really wet, but since I've been, since I did my makeup and stuff and my edges are actually starting to dry, I suspect I am going to need to get my hair wet. So let's take this down. Yeah, I'm gonna to need to get my hair wet. Cheap feels. There's still some squish. So what I'm going to do, since there's some squish, first thing, I'm gonna take my glasses off. Uh, because if I have to spray my hair, I don't want to spray my glasses. There is some squishy sound, but I am gonna go ahead and get her uh, a little wet. You do not want your hair dripping, soaking wet. You do want it wet enough that your product will go in fairly well. So I'm catching my edges in particular since that's where I am no longer wet at all. But what I am listening for is a squish. She's not dripping and I need to get the top of it. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get over there near you guys and I'm gonna squish my hair so you can hear what you need to be hearing. Now, if you're, you know, been working with your curly hair for a while, you probably already know this, but people who are just starting their journeys, this is what you're supposed to be, how wet you're supposed to be. Um, I'm not dripping. If you notice, I'm not dripping, but you'll get a squish. That's the sound you want in your hair when you're ready to style it. So I'm gonna flip all my hair over, and I have two ways that I actually apply product. For my first two products, I do the rake and squish. So I'm gonna put down So it's about, as you can see, it's about that much gel. And then I rub that out. And I start in about the middle and work my way down. 
because I don't want to get that much up near my roots. Some will get up there anyway. But you don't want to get a lot up near your roots. Your roots um, is where all your natural oils are, so you don't need a whole lot of extra up there. And then I'm going to rake it through. And I'm trying not to get it on my scalp. I just want to keep it on the hair, maybe about a quarter an inch away from the roots. And then once I'm sure I've got that in, I squish it. I can already tell you, even though I've got squish, that I'm probably going to need to add more water either right before or just after I put in my curl definer. Now there's a couple reasons I like the hydration serum. For one, it, it acts as almost a gel on its own and uh, starts the curling process. It adds moisture, but the way this particular gel works, it also breaks up larger clumps, so I have smaller clumps, smaller pieces of hair sticking together. I'm going to add the coconut shea elixir. Now the thing with this elixir, it says to add about a dime. I add just a little bit more than that, mostly because my hair is prone to fizz. Fizz. Mostly because my hair is prone to frizz. Again, I'm going to do the rake and scrunch method, starting in about the middle of my hair. I'm making sure also to get the parts that are on top really well because that's where most of my frizz shows up is right on my crown and then we scrunch again. I'm going to add a little bit more water and uh, just to get more of a squishy sound to it. All right so the next thing I'm going to grab is my curl definer, curling cream, um, any kind of you know basically yeah, curling cream, a curling definer, whatever you want to use for this process. You could go straight to gel if you want. I don't. Um, I don't. Again, I don't use a lot. My hair doesn't need a lot, so I use maybe that much for my whole head. <laughs> Put that in. Scrub this out like that, and we're gonna start off the same way. Ah. We're gonna start off the same way working it in, starting closer to the middle and working out with a rake a little bit. Just trying to get it in there. And then I do a praying hands kind of thing because I want to make sure to get, to get this all through my hair. So I've got my hair all forward. The curl definer is helping it stick a little bit, helping me make sure I got it all up. And then I will start near my face and I will go out like this. And then I will move up to the next section and do the same thing. And then the next section. And then up to the next section. Just steadily moving further up to make sure that that curl cream gets all through. You'll want to make sure your hair is detangled. I'm a little surprised I'm having some trouble at the top. Uh, my hair doesn't tangle up. Okay, now that that's all in, now I will squish. already tell that I am there we go a little losing it I've got enough squish in there alrighty so that's all I'm gonna need for my curly definer use the least amount that you need um, obviously if you need more use more but with my hair if I use too much it's going to end up too heavy and the curl will actually flatten out. The next thing I'm going to do very quickly, 
Like I said, if you have a problem with tangled hair, you need to make sure your hair is detangled before you start. I should have said that at the beginning, I'm sorry. I'm gonna part my hair. It's gonna be slightly off center because I've noticed in the past that this side generally has more hair than this side. So to give this side a little bit more hair, I part slightly off center. My part does not need to be exact for me. Once I've got it fairly parted and I've got things moved over, the first thing I'm gonna do is take this section right here. Oh, make sure I got it all. And I'm going to kind of roll it. My bangs are at their that weird point where um, they're in your way all the time. They're at that point where if uh, where I would normally cut them, but I'm trying not to cut them. Anyway, so I wrap, wrap that up and I put a clip on that side. And we're gonna do something similar on this side. However, I comb through again real quick. That's the other thing I like about this comb is that it helps go through and define um, clumps. And I'm gonna go back here in the back. And I'm gonna pull a clump to the side and then the rest of this is gonna go up in a clip because we're gonna curl. So put our other clip up. So there we go. Okay, so I used to finger curl, but I had some problems with finger curlings. First of all, because of the kind of products you're working with, um, I found that my fingers would stick at the bottom and the curl at the bottom wouldn't stay curled because you know you pull the, your finger out of the curl and it elongates all that, which is fine, but it was just difficult for me to make it so that that bottom curl would stay curled. Uh, the bottom part of the curl would stay curled. Also, it's slow for me. I find using the comb a lot quicker, and I got this um, idea from people using a Denman brush. If you search Denman curling on YouTube, you'll find a few of them that do this. But I don't like using a brush, like I said, so I tried it with my comb, and it works just fine. So you bring your comb right up against your root, and you use it to curl in a circle like that all the way down and you get a bit of a curl I can't even see what's going on this one's being uncooperative today you just go around in a circle bring it around Bring it around, bring it around, bring it around. And sometimes I do have to redo it, but it's still, even if I have to redo a curl, I find it is still quicker than finger curling. So then I'm gonna go back up. Grab another section out. Pull it straight so I can find it. near the root and wrap the curl. And you can uh, push it up. These guys are not cooperating today. I'm not sure. I'm getting a little bit. It'll get better. I actually am not finger curling as much now. I'm trying to figure out how often I need to finger curl to remind my hair what it's supposed to do. Finger curling is supposed to help um, help train your hair to do the curling you want it to do. Oh. All right, so I'm gonna zip through the rest of this. This is gonna take me about 10 minutes. I get 10 minutes, maybe seven, five to 10 minutes per side doing it, depending on how many clumps 
how big the clumps are that I'm working with. I like working with smaller clumps uh, because the bigger clumps will make my hair look a little less full when they're when everything is done. If you're new to curly hair care and you're finding your hair isn't breaking up into smaller natural clumps on its own, give it time. The more care you give it, the better it behaves, so to speak. We still have problems with things like, you know, humidity and stuff. But um, my hair used to be, used to clump into really, really large, um, thick clumps. A whole bunches of my hair would stick together. Uh, the smaller sections that you're seeing me do now um, are actually relatively recent. I've been doing this for about two years. We are starting to hit the parts of my hair that are shorter and where the curling this way can get a little bit more difficult. If I'm finding myself having issues with the curling, um, I will sometimes take larger clumps. I find that using larger clumps can help. I'm also still, like I said, I'm trying to grow out my bangs. And um, I'm also still working on um, doing this better. I just started doing the using the comb recently. And while it is easier over and quicker overall, you still have to kind of learn it. I'm doing pretty good, I think. But in these areas where you have less, or the hair length is, isn't there, it can be a little bit more difficult to get the process to work. Sometimes I do still have to use my fingers. If you catch in such a way that it feels like you're gonna yank your hair, uncurl it and take your comb out. But that's the best I'm gonna be able to do on my bangs. And yeah, that took about 10 minutes, give or take. So as you can see, the curls are starting. It'll get better once we get into um, diffusing. I forgot to mention, and I should add this now, I am not a professional. I don't work with hair. I'm not in the industry. These are just all tips I've learned. I will... Um, tips and tricks that I've learned. And I will list the ladies down below, the curlies down below, that I use to get um, my curly tips from. And um, how I learned to, who taught me how to care for my hair. I've also noticed that this side tends to, tends towards bigger clumps than the other side. Stay. Yes, I talk to things. I talk to pens, I talk to clips. <laughs> One of the things that I've noticed that helps me is when I get this around is to catch the hair, the strand, so it's kind of looped around there and then it catches better overall for the spinning. Oh, we grabbed another one. It's okay, it doesn't have to be perfect. And you'll notice for both the sides of my head, I curl forward. Um, your curl pattern might work a little differently and may not want to curl forward. Just curl whichever way. I've found that it's easier to go most of the time with your hair's curl, the way it curls. Um, when I first started finger curling, I struggled to figure out which direction worked for my hair. I suspect that that's normal for most of us. Um, now, it's quite possible I've trained them all to do go forward like this in that fight, <laughs> uh, quite possibly. So now that all of that is in and done, I'm gonna take my gelée, and again, you can use gel, you can use whatever kind of hold you want. 
This is just happens to be the green apple and aloe from uh, Talia Wajid that my hair just really is loving right now. Yay, we have a truck backing up. Anyway, um, just like the other one, I'm only going to need a little bit. Just like my curl definer, I don't need a lot. And that's going to get rubbed in my hands. And I'm going to flip my hair over. But instead of raking, I'm just going to scrunch this in. That's all I'm going to do. I'm not going to rake or anything. I'm just trying to help um, get that curl and that lift in there. My hair is feeling a little dry, but that's okay. So basically, I'm working it in in such a way that it will help hold my curl but doesn't necessarily need to coach my entire head. And again, while I'm crunching near my scalp, if you'll notice, I'm kind of doing this, so I'm not getting it on my scalp. Now I'm gonna take my T-shirt and I'm going to get excess water and excess product out by scrunching. This will also help get that curl in place. It also gets a lot of that extra dampness out because I don't wait. Look at that. Look at that. That pretty. It also gets extra dampness out because I don't wait to diffuse. A lot of people do. I have found that if I wait and then diffuse my hair dry, I get more frizz. So I do it a different way. So now I'm going to diffuse. Two things about my diffusing. One, I do the very first part of it upside down, a lot of it, because my hair grows out from the root flat and straight, which is one of the reasons why I have problems getting and keeping volume. And going upside down helps give me a little extra lift because it will actually bring the hair forward and out a little bit. And the second thing I do is called pixie diffusing. Pixie diffusing is when you put your hair in the diffuser, then you turn it on. When you're ready to remove it, you turn it off and then you remove it. This is to help reduce, again, frizz because you're not blowing your hair around. Now, I do not diffuse completely 100% dry. I diffuse to about the 90 to 95% mark and then I air dry from there. Again, it is to help reduce frizz. Um, when I'm getting to that point, I keep an eye on my crown, and if I'm starting to see frizz, it's time for me to stop. I'm gonna start with my bangs, and. Here's the first pixie diffusing. Now I'm gonna do over here on the side, and we're gonna speed through this. One of the places I have the most trouble with my hair is the back. I am not sure why that is. So I am going to go and finish the diffusing in my bathroom where it's a little bit more comfortable, but you see what I've been doing and I will be back in just a bit. Brought myself back out. The upside down part is the hardest part for me and my back, I can feel it. It's really flat back here. Um, but again, it has to do with the fact that it's very awkward to do all that over here. So my last round of diffusing is basically in levels and I will take this up and I use it for a shorter amount of time, but this is to help get some more lift again. And I'm still pixie diffusing, taking small bits. We're hitting that point where my hair is almost where I need to just let it do. Back in the back, I do need to let it do its thing. Just lift. And when I get, I've already done most of this crown. So once I get to the crown, I then go to the middle section. So about here, and I start doing a lift there. And then I want to try to get into the bottom and everything, but I'm going to flip my hair because the other thing I want to get is this root area that is still pretty damp. So I'm going to go underneath from this side first, 
again pixie diffusing and I'm trying to make sure this whole time I'm trying to make sure that this is fairly flat on my head that the longer spokes are there's like four of them that are in the middle if you can see there's four spokes in the middle I try to make sure those are flat on my head the whole time I'm doing this Now, to get this area here that is still wet, I'm actually going to take it up to warm and put it on low, and I'm going to basically just try to dry along this area, and it's going to, I'm going to kind of bounce it a bit. I've turned it back to cool. Bit dryer. We're going to flip over to this side and do some of the same things. Okay, so <laughs> we're looking a little wreckish. For now, uh, I'm pretty much ready to just let it sit and air dry for about 30 minutes. So for me, I'll be back in 30 minutes. For you, it won't be that long at all. Alrighty, so we are pretty much dry except for a section in the back that I got damp to try to pull up some of that curl again it's not even that wet and it didn't really do that much so but now that we are dry in the rest of my hair where I've got curl to be concerned about I'm going to take a little bit of that reshma oil I'm going to put that in my palm don't want a lot just want my hands to be oily enough that uh, as I'm clearing going through and loosening up the clumps and trying to fluff things out that um, they're not going to catch on anything and rip out any hair or break any hair. Again, I'm going to flip my hair over to do this. And I initially just kind of put some oil on in that praying hands kind of way. But I want that oil on my hands so I can start fluffing gently. You see I'm taking my fingers through, but I'm being gentle. If I hit any snags, I make sure to go through them very carefully with the oiled part of my fingers. This is just to start my fluffing process. Um, bigger curls I can actually split like this. Again, I'm being very careful not to yank anything. I'm just trying to get rid of any cast and loosen up my curls, which will have dried in a tighter formation. And then we'll get the other side. As you can see, my hair doesn't, my hair doesn't tangle that much. Even when, um, well, I guess it did tangle a little bit when um, I wasn't caring for it properly. But in general, my hair just doesn't tangle. At least not yet. Now we're going through and I'm getting, making sure to get that oil through my hair. Going very gently where I'm running into spots where I feel it my hair stopping my fingers, and I'm being very gentle. Just get through it, and then I put a little bit of the oil on top because that's where I have the worst of my frizz. And then, with that done, I'm going to get my pick. I like this wide pick. It's a Cantu pick. I don't, I've tried the smaller with the really narrow uh, straight picks. This actually seems to work best for my hair. And I'm going to, again, flip my hair upside down and I'm going to pick it. Being very gentle. Again, very gentle. Stopping if I run into anything. I'm not actually combing it. It kind of looks like that, but I'm using very short fluffing movements, motions. And then I'm going to fluff her upwards a little bit. Like that. Now 
And before I bring my hair back over, I'm now gonna get some of the Headstrong Volume Gel Spray. And we are gonna start on the back and go around. And then I lift up and get inside. And with the gel in place, I do a bit more crunching just to make sure my curl is still being curly. A little bit. Let her dry down a bit. And then I'm gonna bring it up. And once I'm up, we're gonna pick her again. And just doing brief upward motions. She's being really wide today, but honestly, my hair it won't stay. My hair doesn't stay as volumized as I like it would. <laughs> it just doesn't. And again, I'm gonna lift up and get inside and scrunch a bit just to get some of that scrunchiness in there, that curliness in there. And then one more thing kind of help this area here where my roots are kind of flat, I will put some of that gel on my pick and do a lift up at the roots. I'll do that a few times to get a bit more volume up top. Just a little bit, it won't give me a lot. This gel dries, uh, the spray gel dries pretty quickly, and it does really help. Put some more on the other side. Again, just lifting, picking her upward to get a little bit of lift on top. because I'm floofing it up, it's gonna help. And done. I'm being very curly today. Uh, my hair really, like I said, it really loves that apple and aloe stuff. And the curl is just a little bit off because of having been put in the um, buff for a while while I did my face before I came out um, to actually film. So the curl is just a little bit less than what it normally is when I'm done. Also, the amount of time that I took was a little longer because I was showing you rather than just doing my process. So um, for the video, I think it was about an hour and 15 minutes total uh, it's honestly from the curling to the time that I end my um, diffusing is somewhere around 30 40 minutes in there uh, depending on how how far I diffuse and then of course I have to let my hair dry and do its thing and the final part is only a couple of minutes but that is how I take care of my hair how I style my hair as I was trying to say a little earlier I am not an expert I am not in the industry I am not a hairstylist I don't do hair cutting none of that I'm I'm just giving you guys what I've learned generally works for my hair I'm still learning um, 
I've only been doing this two years. So I expect in two more years that again, my process will change as we've seen. Uh, if you look in my hair care videos, you will see that my process has changed actually several times uh, just in the two years. Uh, I used to do a lot of, I used to add a lot of curl creams um, just before I air dried and things like that, just to give a little extra boost. And that did help, but it also seemed to uh, increase some of the frizz that I would receive. So or I would end up with, so I've stopped doing that. Especially now that my hair kind of has the idea that it's supposed to curl. I usually have a bit more curl on top too. But um, yeah, so there's things that I've learned that are working for my hair and I'm always trying new things and new products and figuring new things out to uh, work with my hair. And so I'm sure next year I'll be doing something different because I'll have learned something different that works better for my hair than what I'm doing now. Um, being a curly girl is a process. Everybody asks, says, I really want to do this the quickest and cheapest way I can. Well, there's not really a quick, cheap way to do it. Unfortunately, because what works for me won't necessarily work for you and your hair. Your hair could be very similar in its curl pattern to mine, but be coarser, be more porous, be thinner, be a whole lot of things that make what you need to do for your hair different than what I do for my hair. So unfortunately, and the same thing with products, the products that work for me may not necessarily work for your hair. Anyway, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and get going and, and try to get the kids out of your ear. Um, so Hopefully that helped and we're done for the day and moving right along. I hope you like what you've seen and if you do like what you've seen and you're not subscribed, I hope you will hit that no subscription bell. Notice, subscription, just subscribe. And that you will hit the notification bell so you know when I upload. I currently upload Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, but I do have bonus videos that go up almost every month. If you're part of my notification squad, you'll wanna make sure that both your subscription and your bell are still active because yeah, indeed, they're still being knocked off. I'm not having so much problems with the uh, subscription as I am with the actual notifications going away. And it's intermittent. But I mean, one, one time I'll click one on a video and it's fine. And the next time um, I'll get to see a video too and then all of a sudden it disappears. Who knows? Who knows? If you choose not to subscribe, I kind of understand. It's noisy around here sometimes. Plus, I tend to blather on like an idiot, and my videos are often quite long, so we get it. I understand. We'd be sad and disappointed. Hopefully, though, you will come back again because you're always welcome here, and we love having the company. And if you do come back again, don't forget to bring your cup of tea. And I hope some of you will come to Atlanta. Anyway, this is very cool now. We've been sitting here for about an hour and a half, almost two hours, so it's very cool. I don't know if this tea is any good cold. It's usually in a hot tea with chocolate or something with it, and those teas I can drink hot or cold usually. So we'll give her a sip and then we'll be on our merry way. Oh no. <laughs> I've got the, the caramel is coming in much stronger but cold we've got that bitterness in the background that i don't like it's not as strong as in some teas but it's definitely there so yeah not a good tea cold i'm gonna let my son drink it he'll be fine with it and then you can see that i'm already starting to lose some of that volume that we just did only took about 15 minutes uh later in the day actually some of this curl will um set better and it'll look a little different and it'll look a little just a little bit fuller but in general this is what i've got for the day <sighs> end of the day hair will look a little better it's, it's so sad that it takes it that long but anyway we're done you all have a great day